Uh, climate change program update, item 21. Vicky Buck. Be aware that the council has a target for the city itself and actually its subsidiaries as well by 2030, but hasn't quite adopted one for the entire city. Um, so it's got to be by 2050 for your climate change mayors. Um, but what we're considering is bringing that forward. Um, and this is basically the process that we're working through. This involves um, some mood survey that these guys will tell you far more about, and then a, a strategy, um, and then it will also involve, won't it, um, a series of actions that um, that we will do. And I've actually invited both the um, rebellion, ex Extinction Rebellion and the um, Climate Strike uh, people to the next Innovation and Sustainability Committee to talk through what actions they would like to see rather than the strategy. And we have but the date of that because it might be helpful for the live streaming that you say the date of that meeting. May 12th. 20? No? 20. No, there's, there's two, in, two in May. One's a carbon forestry update. Yeah, I think it's May 12th. But right, I'll check. Okay. <laughs> I just thought it would be useful for the purposes <laughs> of the live streaming, but now I've added to, add to, add to the complexity of the situation. Uh, a future future live stream will tell us the date of the meeting. Twelfth is a Sunday, so I don't know. Uh, it's, it's not the twelfth. It's not the twelfth. Okay, on, you'll be alone if you come in on the twelfth. In fact, you won't get in the door. Phil. Okay. Thank you, and I can see how this is a start to get something that's really urgent, as we were told very clearly today. But my question really is, besides the good people who say made submissions who might come along at the next meeting, I'm just, is there a plan around uh, involving, I guess, other, other key people before, in fact, to, I guess, basically socialise the, the, the concerns and have as much involvement by the people with the strategy as possible? rather than, and I'm aware this looks like the beginning part of it, but I'm just wondering, is there a, is there a plan around it involving um, yes. a, lot, a lot of key people as well, and could you tell us what that is, because I didn't see it. Absolutely. So we've got quite a comprehensive engagement plan. So the first will be um, next month we're going out with a sentiment-based survey to all residents, which will give them the opportunity to kind of share their ideas around um, climate change and actions that they can take. And then we've got... Um, some work to do to develop a strategy. We'll be using some sort of a technical advisory group with that, but also a much wider um, stakeholder engagement group uh, with a particular focus on um, youth. Uh, and then once we've got the strategy developed, that will go out for public consultation. So it's kind of a four-staged approach. Yes, yes, yeah, absolutely, so involve EWI as well. Okay, uh, Glenn? Thank you. Were you here for the public participation? I was, but yeah, great. absolutely. Was there anything from that uh, that you feel has slightly altered the, I don't know, about the approach? You've just talked about the stakeholder with youth, but, you know, any emphasis or any slight shift within... Um, I mean, I, um, I mean, it was great to hear from both Extinction Rebellion and the youth. Um, I think their sort of urgency and passion came through. Uh, a couple of things that um, I think that we could have some sort of quick wins around, uh, particularly looking at um, advancing some of the work we're doing in education programs in schools. Um, so that was something they mentioned, and I think there's an opportunity to do that. And the other thing that just came through really strongly is how they want to be involved. So looking at opportunities to do that, we spent some time speaking with them afterwards, So and, and great to um, invite them along to the next uh, Innovation Sustainability Development Committee. Um, I mean, the other um, thing I heard was about what the target is and bringing that forward and the urgency, and that will be part of the discussion with the community. So I don't think it changed things radically, but it just um, sort of emphasised those points. And Brendan was correct. It's May the 20th. <laughs> May the 20th. <laughs> Brendan is correct. How often you say that before? No, no. <laughs> I, I actually don't think Vicky's <laughs> ever said that before, so there, there we go. We'll, we'll, we'll knock that one up. Uh, Yanni. Thank you. Um, so I appreciate the work that's been done on this. We, 
we've currently got a climate smart strategy and what I can't see is where the report is around what's been achieved from that document. Is there a, is there a document that kind of draws in what we've said we're going to do in terms of that action plan and where things have got to? Um, we have very much had a look at what was achieved. So we haven't got it documented. We haven't got a nice kind of report on that. Right. But we have, um, we've still got the author of that, um, Tony. And so we've been working with him to kind of take the lessons from that, what worked well and what were some of the things that we need to do differently. So we're sort of focused, I guess, with our resources at directing them on developing the new strategy rather than looking at the achievements from the past strategy but very much embedding in what we've learned from that. It's just that there's a whole bunch of stuff in there that's actually really good, mm -hmm. that lots of thought has gone into, that, like, take the versatile soils or the, you know, protection of our um, land for growing um, productive land. That's really key to district planning, land use planning. Um, and yet we just don't seem to have had any action on that at all that's visible. So when we heard the presentation this morning, I mean, it really struck a chord with me around people talking about the ability for people to get food, for example. We've identified that as a work stream, as a high priority, and yet we've seen it's very hard to see any what work's actually been done in that field. So there has been work done on that, um, and I need reminding of that's the work that Tony's been doing. Um, is that with sort of the gardens and things in no, community? No, like, so if you take the FUDs, um, is it Future Urban Development Settlement Pattern? Like if you read yes. the planning context in there around things like versatile soils and food, local food production, it's quite against what I would have thought a, a sustainable climate change approach would be. We'll certainly be looking at the various actions in there and how they can be incorporated into um, the strategy and our um, implementation. And here's Tony. Um, you're right. We could do far better on that particular aspect of that strategy. That, that's uh, an issue for um, all of New Zealand, actually, because the rules around protecting um, those soils have, have been... Um, Slack. They've reduced the strength of those rules. So we're looking... We, through the district plan, we'll need to boost those so we have uh, greater protection of our, of our productive landscapes. At a governance level, what I want a sort of reassurance of is if we've identified something as a high priority, the work gets done. And that's what we did in the last strategy, and it hasn't been done. We've got a new process underway that doesn't go back and look at report against the existing strategy, that develops a new strategy. So I think just having some confidence that the things we identify, that we spend lots of time and resources developing as priorities, are getting done is really critical here. So I just don't quite know how that's going to be done. Well, we'll certainly have mechanisms within the action plans to report progress against those. The, the other thing I think, just to answer that, is that this is the strategy of do we aim to be a uh, carbon neutral as a city by 2040, or maybe after this morning even earlier, um, or what, but then along the whole um, plan is a series of action plans and that's the part that I find much more interesting than the strategy as a whole I have to say because that's the actual doing of things that will make a difference in our carbon emissions for both the city council and for the city as a whole and how do we help other people actually reduce their carbon emissions businesses but individuals as well and how do we involve the community in doing that so that's the part that's actually, like you, I find most yeah. um, yeah. most direct and interesting and of most immediate impact. But in terms of, as a city, we have to decide, because we've seen some of the costings, we haven't got the total ones of, for 2040, what do we do um, as a city about our carbon emissions? 2025, which is what the groups this morning were asking, for the city as a whole, um, you want to go for that? The, this, there's really good impacts of that, but you need to be aware of all of the things when you're making that decision. Do you want to go to 2035? Do you want to go to 2040? Those are the decisions that we have to make. And there's a sentiment survey going out this month, isn't it? Yeah, at the end of the month, in terms on the 29th, of asking people. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Which will help a little bit. But there's no way we can take our foot off the pedal on the action plan. It just has to be from now on action and every building that we build has to be built for sustainability. But it's not. 
I know. <laughs> I know it's not. And I guess the, the thing that I'm sort of struggling with is we've got a whole bunch of actions that are really good, like like the climate smart you know strategy actually has a whole bunch of actions that are really good. Um, so I just don't quite understand if they're all just being sort of put to one side or no, how they're being. We're not going to lose those. We're certainly looking thing. very closely at what's in there and what is incorporated okay. into current and future action plans. Right. So maybe under two, you, you could make reference to that strategy. And maybe that will give me comfort that we're not just tucking it out. Sorry, which one? My understanding right. is that the, the Climate Smart strategy um, has been um, in the work programme and people have been acting on the stuff Absolutely. that's been Absolutely, I mean, it's a current yeah. strategy so that's, that's live. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that was yep. from um, 2008 yeah. to 2025. That's right. And that's so why we've seen so many of the actions mm. that are already taking place. Yes. Yeah. My understanding, though, is that one of the key things that it didn't do, and I don't know why because it wasn't involved at the time, is it didn't set an actual target. That what it what it wanted to do was just to lower emissions. That's correct. Yeah, yes. it didn't have a. Yep. Yeah, that's a fair so point. So the, the action was to lower emissions, but it didn't say to get to net. Yeah, it What's did. That's right. But there was no target. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're developing as part of this, but correct. also that this strategy will deal with both mitigation and adaptation. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Phil. Um, I'm pleased to hear what I am hearing, uh, say, in terms of how, and I'm aware this is sort of the initial part, but I think clearly, um, and I think what will ensure that we actually achieve the, the goals for this should be having um, a, wider group, a wide group of people who are part of this. They'll make sure, I'm sure, that um, Council will put our money where our mouth is. So, uh, and the other part too, though, and I'm, I <clears throat> agree with where um, Yanni is coming from, clearly the whole climate change thing has to be done in a holistic way, and any strategy or implementation or action plans clearly have to be aligned with all of the other work the Council does, mm. otherwise we would be wasting our time. And no one wants to do that, but I think that's where getting the, this whole strategy and implementation part to get together, getting it together it is really, really important. And so I think I'm, I'm encouraged to hear that early on, and I think right from the beginning, the, the, the wider, um, the, our wider community, and particularly our young people, need to be involved. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Pauline? Thank you. Um, yes, following on from that holistic um, comment that, that Councillor Clearwater made, I was wondering, as, um, if as chair of the Infrastructure, Transport and Environment Committee, and having uh, climate reference to climate change in our terms of reference, that perhaps I could be invited to be part of the group? Can we just add Councillor Cotter? Eh? Well, I, I don't think <laughs> I don't think you, you, you stop for one second uh, limiting this group to, 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 to bring on um, secondees from outside the organisation. I mean, and it, Yanni, one of the things we did notice from them is that their time is really limited and we, the working group itself is likely to be meeting during school hours, right? So we're not excluding anyone. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so recognising the urgency of the climate crisis established by September 2019 and a net carbon neutral target for Christchurch as a whole. Um, and I mean, I, I don't know whether you want something specifically in number two that just says um, uh, uh, to uh, engage with the with um, the wider community, you know. Uh, well, we'll sort out whether that's through this group or the whole Oh, I see. Right. Okay. All right. All right. So you're moving it, um, Vicky, yeah. and seconded. Uh, sorry. Yeah. I'm just wondering if it's appropriate, since as we're creating a working group to appoint a chair to that working group. <laughs> uh, sorry. I just I just assumed I just assumed that um, Councillor Buck would be the chair. But is, can it be done through the working group, or does it have to be done through the council or chair? Well, I mean, if if, the, if you want to do that, I can I can put form a working group of councillors da 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 to be chaired by Sarah Templeton. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 
in which case I won't take Sarah as a seconder. <laughs> I won't take Mike as a seconder. Right. To be chaired by Councillor Templeton. And then, yeah. All right. So that's the, that's the resolution. Um, any discussion? Uh, Glenn, Dion, Sarah. Yeah, thank you. Just a, a few points. In 1992, uh, the Rio Earth Summit was convened. So that's just a few years after I began my working life. And at this point, I've got roughly 10 years to go. In 1993, Hans Kuhn, a theologian in consultation with other leaders and scholars, wrote Towards a Global Ethic. Uh, the first four parts of that uh, work talk about uh, human rights, uh, respect for life and non-violence. The fifth part talks about uh, a stewardship, sustainability and care for the earth. And in some ways we may interpret in hindsight the events of March the 15th. Um, the, the, the enormous tragedy in the afternoon which followed on from the, clue to the students' climate strike is a kind of um, lightning rod of um, that all those uh, things coming together, in some ways, they are actually linked. They're not really two inseparable dots. So we, we've heard this uh, call reinforced this morning. I go back to those dates, 1992, 1993. It's now 2019. My sense is we're really into extra time. And so what I want, along with all of you, is this to be clearly passed unanimously. Uh, but also permeate to all our community boards, which we heard this morning uh, in our informal, and particularly to my board. The Coastal Burwood Board really needs to get this. And I'd still say this if <laughs> my colleague David was here. We really need to hear it. It's really, we are into extra time. Um, sorry, Sarah, wasn't it? Yeah. And there was someone else. Oh, uh, Dion. Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting this work started. Um, I mean, we've been working as a council for some time now on lowering our own emissions, working on many things citywide, but to have a strategy which covers both mitigation and adaption, I think it's really important um, as a city. We have started some of those conversations, but they are big ones, they are tough ones, um, and getting citywide buy-in on that is really important. We heard this morning, and we've known for a while, the science is settled. The actions needed are really, really clear, and what's needed now is political will. Let's get on with it. Dion? Yeah, it's, I think this is really important. And it, well, it is actually. It's not a think. It is really important. Um, and I just wanted to sort of make a mention that I think this is really good that this is happening. But we also need to tie this into a national level conversation as well. And we're lucky that as a big council, we've got a lot of resources and some great staff. We're able to attract great staff, and we do have good staff, so thank you very much for the work you're doing. But there are other places in the, in the South Island, in the country, who can't attract great staff to do this work as well. So when we're creating this strategy, I would love us to be able to reach out as well to, to other parts of the country and other parts of the South Island. And I'll just, an example at the moment, I suppose, is the West Coast. Um, you know, I've got a small farm over there. We're completely off the grid. Um, you know, we, we're, we're carbon positive, I suppose. We're replanting um, forest on, on Kahurangi National Park where we border that. But we've run out of water for the first time since we've had it um, for 15 odd years because of the drought that's happening over on the West Coast. And at the same time, you've got coastal erosion eating away the coastal parts of the, uh, of the coast as well. Um, with a population of 800 or so that live in that area, they're not necessarily the ones contributing to the climate change, but they're actually having the most impact. Um, and as a small city and as a small country, we're not necessarily contributing the largest amount to climate change, but we're also seeing major impacts of it. So I think the leadership that we need to show in this, and actually we need to be more inclusive of how we start adapting um, and actually leading the conversation. So I think this is, got to, this is going to have a really good conversation starter for a lot of people, uh, but I would like us to reach out as well. Thank you. Uh, Yanni. Um, I think you know, it's really important as a council that we spend energy on action rather than on just re reinventing history or, or um, reinventing the wheel. 
Um, there has been a lot of work going on through this council around actions that we can take, and I look forward to those progressing with a sense of urgency. Um, and hopefully this new structure will give an ability for that to be done, that the actions are either done and reviewed, or they're actually, if they're not happening, then we find out why. That would be really useful. Um, but the thing that struck me about this morning's deputations is that some of the key people that should be involved in the key sustainable land use planning decisions of our city and region are not having their voices heard. And that is a real concern. And we need to ensure, I believe, that young people and children are having a say in the use of our land use because it's absolutely critical when you look at some of the things that are going on at the moment where you have less than 100 submissions um, and you're just missing that voice of the future in terms of how the city and the region grow at the expense of our environment. So we really, I think, have some work to do in that space uh, and I think there's a there's a lot that we could do to enable that. But the other point I want to make is that communities need to be involved in this as well. Some of the decisions around climate change and coastal hazards, for example, have significant community impacts, and we need to find a way in which the community uh, that's uh, affected can participate, understand, and engage in the decisions that are needing to be made. So I think there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, but you know, I fundamentally support setting up this working group to provide that ongoing monitoring of the actions that uh, are being yeah. undertaken. No, the, the, the innovation hey, 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 hey. We'll okay. Well, there's a committee, a structure set up to do it, and you know, it just needs a focus. And I think this provides a greater focus, which is needed. So I'm, I'm happy to support it. But I do hope that we can, at some stage, get a resolution around how we get children and young people in our city engaged in land use planning strategies and decisions because at the moment it seems a huge gap. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. It's carried. Thank you.